Today I'm going to show you how to use Adobe Lightroom Classic. No matter if you just got the trial version of the Photographer's Package or if you already subscribed, you do have two options. Option one is Adobe Lightroom Classic. That's the one we will use because we're old. And even if you're not old, just wait until you have to carry all of your around in the field or up a mountain. You will feel old in no time. And to the right, you would have the option to use Adobe Lightroom CC. Nobody wants that. Go away. Let's dive in. If I manage to double click that. So what we actually need first is to import some photos. We're in the library module and we're looking at the left side. There's your catalog, there's your folders. And what I do usually, I copy my card to my machine, then I back it up and then I'm using the folder on my machine to import into Adobe Lightroom. So let's click the plus sign. Let's add a folder. And luckily we're already in the folder we want to add. So we're going to choose that one. Since I want to show you how to use rating system too, we'll just import all of them. Hit import. Now you see Adobe Lightroom is importing and it's fetching the initial previews, which is a nice thing to do. Thank you, Adobe Lightroom. So this is the interface after you imported a bunch of photos into Adobe Lightroom. This is where your folder is located. This is an overview of the images you just imported. And here you have them again in the photo strip down below. So let's take a look. That's a really nice photo. And I do want to edit that. How I do de determine which photos I do want to edit and which do I don't want to edit is pretty simple. I use the rating system. So you just use the numbers on your keyboard. And if I want to edit a photo, because I like it, I put two stars on it. I just set the rating to two and you see down here in the photo strip that I set a rating of two or five stars. So I want to keep that photo. I use the arrow to the right to go to the next. Nice sky and take that, probably that. So what I do now is I filter the photos out because I just marked those I want to edit. So I set the filter to rate it and boom, I only get shown the photos I do want to edit and all the others are still there because if we're going back to filters off. You can see the other photos are still there. So if you change your mind, you can always go back. Let's set them to rate it again. First things first, Command A or Control A if you're on the Windows machine to highlight them all. Click on any of these with the right mouse button and click Create Virtual Copies. This creates virtual copies, so you have your original and I do like to work on a, on a copy. So the original always stays the same in case I want to have one colored version and maybe later I decide, okay, I want to do black and white too, which is something we could actually do with one of these. So you highlight the first photo you want to edit and you go to the develop module. And here we are. We assume we don't have any presets at all. And we're just taking a look. This is your navigation pane. It always shows you a little preview of the image you have bigger in the middle. This is your main area. As you can see, image really nice, really big. You can zoom in and out. Your actual zoom level is shown up here on the left. You can put that on fit or fill. And this is how it looks if it if it's filled. I do like to keep it in fit and as zoom levels. I usually use 100 and 200 to 300, depending on how good the image looks at 100 and to determine if there's any noise I need to get rid of. So first photo, let's edit something. This is 
your exposure meter same as it you should have in your camera and it shows you if there's a peak somewhere in the highlights for example over here that's a little bit bluish that's bluish highlights in the sky and the more you left you go here's your blacks here's your shadows your overall exposure highlights and whites so down below we do have your initial adjustments as exposure contrast highlights shadows whites blacks texture clarity dehaze vibrance and saturation right below your exposure where it also shows which settings you use to shoot iso 124 millimeters f 5.6 and 1 250th of a second you have your adjustments you have your crop overlays you have your healing you do have your red eye correction and you do have your masking below that in your adjustments you have a basic part where you can adjust basic things well to be honest they're not quite basic they're a little bit more extensive you got your temperature the overall temperature of your image and you can move that around as you like it and i think we'll leave it here because that looks absolutely amazing you have your tint so you can change the overall tint for example if it's too bluish if you shot at a blue hour you can change the overall tint here's your overall exposure your contrast highlights shadows whites blacks let's start with those so I usually try to not touch contrast or exposure unless it's black and white and I really need it to be more contrasty, but this image as it is looks pretty good. So we're trying to do the adjustments without touching the first two here. The first thing I would absolutely advise you to do if applicable in your image is set some masks. We go over to the masking section and the first thing we select is sky we now have the sky mask and right away while the mask one the sky is highlighted first of all we're calling that thing sky because that's what it is then we select the three three dot menu and select duplicate and invert mask now we do have two masks we have our sky and we have all the rest everything that's not sky hopefully so let's start with the sky we already adjusted the temperature of the overall image so first we're gonna see and try how the highlights look if we tone them down a little bit then we might give the shadows just the tiniest bit of more presence we're boasting the whites a little bit and we're playing a little bit with the blacks. Let's see, that looks nice on the temperature. We're not touch tints or saturation at this point. So, now that we have adjusted the basics of the sky lightly, we go down here. And we set the haze to, what did I set it to, 22? That looked nice. Now let's check if we did a good job. That looks good. All right, let's go to everything that's not sky. So we select the sky inverted mask. And we're starting with the basics again. Highlights, let's see, we boost them a little bit. We give the shadows maybe the tiniest bit more presence, so we make them um, a little bit darker. We're making the blacks a little bit darker, and as you can see, that already increases the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. And we're just pushing the whites a little bit to give that whole image a little bit more pop. Now we can also decide what to do with the greens or not to do with the greens. But let's keep it basic at this time. 
temperature is already adjusted for the overall image, so we don't need to touch that. We're not getting into curves. Um, clarity is a slider you should use carefully, but then again, you can use it. And if we now take a look at the building. That looks nice. It's not overdone, but it's it, but it's present. Then you could adjust, of course, the sharpness, noise, more different. I am not sure. Oh, <laughs> if we go out of the masking tool, I'm sure we will find lens corrections. And I do want to use them. I should have enabled them right away. Um, shot on a Tamron 16 to 300. I believe I shot that image on the Canon EOS 200D. And now let's see if we can straighten that building out a little bit. So we're not touching the tone curve at this time because colors do look quite nice. Uh, we're not touching up on the colors at this point. Maybe, okay, maybe the greens a little bit. The greens do look a little bit flat. Let's see, increasing the saturation just slightly. And the luminance. And since we do adjust the greens, here's a little trick. You go down to calibration and you give the blue primary saturation a little bump. And as you can see, the greens do glow a little bit more, which makes for a nice image. Let's open transform and see what Lightroom can or cannot do with the auto leveling. It can do something. It did a quite nice job. That comes down to your personal preference, of course. If we go back to off, that's the image, how it looked like to the human eye. And that's the image what somebody would probably prefer to be printing. Let's keep it like that. Close up transform, color grading, midtones. The midtones are all tones between your highlights, white highlights, and your blacks and shadows. So everything that's practically somewhere in here. Let's see if we push the midtones. Just slide this a little bit over here. We leave the color of the shadows as they are and just give them a little bit more depth. And the highlights. Let's see. Almost too much. That's nice. Color grading, done. Details, sharpening. Let's see. Um, I do think it looks quite sharp enough. It's not the sharpest lens, but it's not the worst either. You can still see details at 100%. And if we go to 200% it's okay but seriously almost no one unless they're pixel peeping is going to look at an image at 200%. Right. Still looks okay. So since it was a very lit day I don't think we need to do any noise reduction. That would be absolutely overdoing it. Other than that, if you do need to use noise, noise reduction, Adobe integrated AI denoise into Lightroom. And it's an absolutely amazing tool. It takes a little bit to load. And as you can see, even though the original image is quite nicely lit, Lightroom can still denoise and apply a little bit of sharpening. We could, of course, play around with the slider a little bit and see 
where we want it. I think 59 was a nice setting. If we now click enhance, Lightroom will start to calculate what it needs to calculate and denoise the image, even though it wasn't really noisy in the first place. This takes a little bit, which gives you time to drink a sip of coffee. And here we are. Now we only need to get back to filters rated. And here we do have our new DMG, our new DNG file. As you can see, it's your original image name or file name, enhanced noise reduction DNG. And if we now look at that, that looks pretty good. And we're at 200%. If we go back to 100, like I said, at 100, you wouldn't even have seen much of a difference. Now let's see what else do we have. Post crop vignetting. Nice thing to play with. Amount of grain. That's a nice thing to play with as well. If you like to have more grain in your image, you could just apply that. And as you can see here in the sky, it does apply. Pretty nice looking grain, to be honest. But we want this as clean as possible, otherwise we wouldn't have denoised it in the first place. We touched on calibration, we touched on effects. We don't want any vignette in that one. So closing that one down again. We went over the details because we already used denoise. We don't need to do any sharpening with this one. Color grading looks nice. We just set it a little bit in the highlights and in the midtones. And of course, we adjusted the greens a little bit in a saturation just to make them a little bit more pop. And down here in calibration, we boosted blue primary a little bit because that makes greens pop as well. Now let's close everything up we don't need. And this already looks like a really nice image. Now what I'd like to do is to take a look at the overall image, especially the edges, and see if I can find anything that distracts me a little bit. For example, here's a little post that doesn't need to be there. And overall, I don't really like that this, this little corner of the street in front of the building is showing I'm okay with a walkway on a street could be a goner. And also we do have to the right and to the left of the building a little bit of uneven space. Let's try to correct that. First of all, I want to take away that post. That should look nicely. And the post is gone. Goodbye post. And now we just eliminate the street and see that we can get the building to the right and to the left with almost the same distance to the borders. Like that. And we also eliminated the post on this side. So that's nicely looking. And if you now look at the edges, there's almost the same amount. And since we're looking at the edges, when I look here, that looks like a little bit of fringing. Because you see that green color, it's still not bad because I'm pretty sure we can correct that. So let's go back to our adjustment panels on the right, find lens corrections. We already applied the, the, the specific lens profile. Now we go over to manual. And as we have green color fringing on this edge, we can see that we can get away with about eight ish. That looks almost good. Let's zoom into 300%. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, nine ish. That looks great. And if we look 
up here there is a little bit of color fringing and a purple space so let's adjust that as well and we should be fine with level four it's a little bit more harsh here let's try five and here's still a little bit of green color fringing i'm not sure we can get away i'm not sure we can do away with that completely let's go back to nine zoomed out completely you cannot even see it zoomed into a hundred if you know it's there it's maybe in the littlest bit apparent that is a nicely edited image i'm not sure i want to keep that walkway in here but if we do away with that too we might end up with not much of the foreground left oh well it works we touched up on the library module the develop module we touched up on the basic adjustments and everything in between down to calibration play with the sliders see what you like and since we now do have practically a setting that we really like with images from that day in that weather with a lens we might also just save it as a preset so you have your presets panel over here you click the plus icon you say create preset and then you give the preset a name for example and you put it into a new group and now we do have a bunch of YouTube presets you should check that everything that you adjusted is in there you don't necessarily need to click on transform otherwise the preset will try to transform or straighten the lines in all your images <clears throat> I would also leave out the effects and any masking as well as the curves everything else can stay in there support amount slider should always be ticked on and now you just say create now that we're done with the image we go to file and export choose a folder if it lets us give that whole folder a name choose the folder we're making sure that file naming is what we would like it to be image format for the export jpeg quality i usually always set to 100 because if i need to shrink the file size down i do use photoshop for that but for the images i do edit in lightroom i want the best possible quality color space srgb is fine for most if you need to change that of course you can display p3 Adobe RGB 1998 standard, Profoto RGB, or if you do have another one, you can load that here. We do not want to limit the file size. We're not touching on image sizing. We don't want to resize it at this point. We don't want to sharpen it for a specific screen. We do want to have all metadata included. Of course, you can remove that personal information, location information, or you can write keywords as Lightroom hierarchy you could also right away apply a watermark and you could also either choose to show it in finder or windows explorer or one of the other options we don't touch those at this point so we do go and so we can now go export that file and that takes a little bit depending on how my depending on how many adjustments you did and there we are we just exported a really nice picture mm -hmm.